Uh, we should do a taste uh, test, see if you can tell the difference between your craft beer and the king of beers, Adam. Uh, oh, yes. Yes. That's I mean, the king of different. beers, quote unquote, is pretty distinctive in its taste, Gordon. Yeah, it's the king of beers. Yeah. <laughs> king of what is the question? Uh, all right. It looks like uh, looks like we're going. Why don't you address the audience, uh, Gordon? Hey, this podcast is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of oh, beers. Goodness. It, not really. We're making that up. We're going to be talking about, hey, GPP, big news. Wait for it. Um, you're going to have to, if you better sit down if you're not ready for the news. I just signed up for it. You did? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, also, we're going to talk about G-Sync HDR. I got to touch a monitor uh, recently, and it's almost here. And then also, uh, what's coming for the rest of the year in CPUs? Oops. Oops. Yeah. Oops is uh -oh. right. Oh. I'm making abstract art out of my CPU. Oh, my so God. stick around. <laughs> <laughs> that one's not coming back. Lots of news. No, this is just my fidget stuff? spinner. Wait, what? I'm gonna just. I always sit here and massage the, the pins and work. Just looking now at those just pins. Stuck a pencil in it. Look, look at those pins. Hurts inside, Brad. Uh, it's an old Athlon from like 2005. Oh. <laughs> oh god, those pins. Those pins. Yeah, it's rough, isn't it? Uh, you can really. You can really. I don't know how many have you ever fixed. How many bent Athlon pins have you ever rebent? I think the most I've come back is like seven. Like the whole end is kind of like mashed over. You, you I'm know. always mega, like, super cautious around chips with pins, and I haven't bent any because I'm like, <laughs> I spent how much on this? I don't want to mess this up. Yeah. My experiences are actually more durable. <laughs> I mean, the only thing that really messes them up is when you break the pin off, which does happen. You really bend I don't, it too many times. What but. were you doing, Gordon? But, no, <laughs> you because, the pin to you know, fully because it's break in, in a lab. Somebody, some. You know, somebody's not being careful, not me, other people, and then they oh, right. bend you the crap out me. of it. You did tell me about it's, that. It just happens because you've got CPUs everywhere. Most people aren't going to have problems because they have one or two CPUs. Yeah, most people actually pay for them themselves, so they're like really careful I mean, like, when they bent insert motherboard, it. Bent Intel LGA pins coming back on the motherboard, that is really hard that's, to come back yep. from. Really hard. I, that's why I almost prefer PGA. So. Uh, we we got people here. Oh, we got we got people already here. here. All right, hey, hey. okay, we just got here dunk. late. We're gonna be talking about GPP any second now. We're late. Uh, nice. Rusty Shackelford, Rusty, this here. Hey, Rusty. Uh, over on Twitch, we got Dragon Kurt, Nathan Lowry. I mean, everybody. That's a great screen name. Everybody. Hello, there. friends. Who? Wait, which is the great? Everybody's Dragon coming here. Kurt, I think. Yeah, Kurt. Why is that a C U R T? Oh, nice. Or an actual like burst of it, like yes. no, I just, I just. And I shall pronounce my child Dragon. Uh, I don't I don't know why, but he said he broke his seventeen hundred. I think maybe talking <gasps> about pins or something. Oh um, no! How do you do that? I will That's say uh, we our seventeen hundred. The first review one during video got bent. Actually, I mean it probably fell about five feet onto concrete. <laughs> what uh, happened? We know somebody was videoing it. We and know did who not, did it. and obviously dropped the thing. And somebody who doesn't work me. here anymore. Doesn't work here anymore. But Aww. it's pretty well bent. Yeah. And then I then dropped the Broadwell, the 10-core Broadwell, up here. But that's on linoleum, so it's a little... <laughs> and it still worked. Oh, man. All right. Uh, I think All right. Uh, I think we're good. Why don't we, uh, why don't we do it? Are we ready? Yes. Okay. All right. We're late. Sorry. Apologize for it. Okay. Ready? Do it. In this episode... Oh, wait, look at that. I wrote this. See, I have to have it written exactly. Why do I even talk like this? <laughs> <laughs> you got to get your hardcore hardware every, voice on. Yeah, I know. Every week. I, I don't even know where that came from. That's all Olivia's fault. Okay. In this episode of The Full Nerd, GPP is dead. G-Sync HDR almost here. And what to expect in CPUs for the rest of the year. Welcome to the Full Nerd episode 51. I'm your host, Gordon Bong, with co host Brad Charkas. Hello, Internet. As always, Elena Yee. Hey, everybody. And controlling the vertical and horizontal is Adam Patrick Murray. I'm mentally and physically preparing for E3. Oh. Uh, it, is, it is coming up, so video games are, are, are on my mind. And on your shirt? Yeah, and kind on, of. And kind of, you know. A little bit of a little bit of duck hunt. What is that? That's right after Computex too, because I'm going to be going it to Computex again this year. Literally right after yeah. Computex. One it's crazy one day. I'm yeah. actually glad I'm not going to E3 because that would be flying from Taiwan back 
and then basically flying to LA. God, that was just that's just horrible. It would probably be cheaper though. That's what uh, Dan did last year. Really? Dan went to Computex oh. and then he did his honeymoon in Hong Kong or around there and then came back for E3 and he was gone for like a whole month. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then he that's slept terrible. for the next month. Yes. <laughs> that's a rough one. That's a rough one. But wait, wait, let me get us on to the are you wait, are you going to try to That's it. That's it. That's I'm not going to try to derail, derail cuz I already did it. Okay, well I'm I'm going to do a Cronkite here. Let's see. Who's that? I'm just see. Look, check it out. At approximately twelve thirty, <laughs> April. Oh wait, May <laughs> May eighth. <8th, laughs> GPP is pronounced dead. You guys don't know? No, I, I get do it. know who Walter Cronkite is. I just don't oh, remember geez. the actual delivery. I don't remember him having glasses. Walter, so you don't. Uh, and he had glasses, and he just took them off. What's the point of that? Yeah, because because he was tearing you know, up. He's serious. Holy smokes! <laughs> Are you guys did not go to you know uh, American history class or something like that? We're just dead inside, Gordon. We've been desensitized to everything. <laughs> All right. The main thing is Nvidia's controversial GeForce partner program that everybody hated. Nobody ever confirmed what it was outside of Kyle Bennett. Um, but uh, whatever it was, it's already dead. And uh, yes. And I'm going to guess that means Kyle was probably right. Uh, anybody want to fill us in? Basically, I, so to summarize, let me see if I got this right. It's a program that would have forced uh, gaming computer, gaming board members to move the Radeon brand. Like, so right now you could buy, example, we don't really know. Example is uh, Asus Republic of Gamers, huge brand. They've been building that up for 10 years. To move that on to the other brand, not on ROG. You'd have to be on its own brand. Like... Uh, cards not as good as GeForce, I think is what they were trying to encourage you to call it. Yeah. <laughs> they were, uh, uh, yeah. The, uh, what, what Kyle at Hard OCP Report is that it makes it so you have to have a dedicated brand for GeForce that you can't use with Radeon. And ROG is the one that you're talking about. Right. But it would also <laughs> apply to laptops and desktop systems, though, I think, because it did sound like, again, we are going all off the reporting of Kyle Bennett, right. uh, editor-in-chief, longtime editor-in-chief of uh, Hard OCP. This guy, he's got a lot of good sources, uh, and, you know, uh, he said also a lot of PC vendors were unhappy. HP yep. and Dell were yep. pushing back is what he reported, I think. Mm -hmm. Of course, believe me, no one, you're going to go, well, how come you didn't talk to anybody? Well, believe me, I have talked to people. Ain't nobody saying anything, so... Nope. <laughs> Wait, so how, how do we know that it's dead then if it was never Speak. really officially alive? Well, because they said it, that it is. Yeah, they actually came out and Look, look, it. I took my glasses off. 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, <laughs> May 4th, GPP Partner Program is dead. You guys still don't know what that in, is. No, NVIDIA sorry. actually posted a blog post in the beginning of March, I think it is, which Kyle claims is in response to questions from him about GeForce Partner Program, saying, hey, it's about transparency, so you know what's in the box. But they never actually explained what it is. And then Kyle's report came out, you know, after this vague blog post. And then last week, they put another blog post out. And even though it used the word transparency many times... <laughs> They still never actually say what the GeForce Partner Program is. They say that the rumors, conjecture, and mistruths go beyond its intent. Rather than battling misinformation, we've just decided to cancel it. Mm -hmm. uh, it does, it does make you wonder. It against transparency. Yeah. I mean, the whole, like, we're going to be transparent, this is to be transparent, but we're actually being opaque about this. So, yeah. Well, I feel I, like it's kind of telling to say, well, everyone misunderstood what it was, so we're just going to kill it, but we're not actually going to explain to you what it actually was so you guys all understand how you misunderstood it. Yeah, we you're all wrong. It's it's you, it's not me. It's you. Sorry, we got to break this up. That's like, true. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> like, I think they could have gotten in front of this unless the demands really were like for the top rog class top gaming brands like if they had just come out and said look there's a bunch of stuff going on we're not asking for rug we're just asking that you know we want people who buy geforce cards from asus to know that you know the g -Rees brand or whatever Jeez. if you go to the, the, the g -Rees brand then you'll be getting nvidia we just want a brand that has a geforce exclusive if they would have said that you know whatever cool uh, well, Rusty Shackelford says, uh, how am I supposed to know the difference between a 1060 and a 580 now? 
That's true. How is he going to know? <laughs> if it doesn't say, yeah, it yeah. does. It does seem rather odd, though. I mean, I think gamers can tell, but I, you know, but again, you know, people accuse me of being an, an, an Nvidia fanboy, but I, I do think you could see from Nvidia's point of view is like, look, we sell eighty percent of all the graphics cards gamers consume. And we're basically we're paying all these companies to you know because they do they give them money to push these brands of gamers. Uh, basically, AMD is like riding on our coattails because you know we built the ROG brand with you, and then now this is just an example. And and now uh, hey, why am I helping you? You know, so that does kill business people to to pay to help their competitors, right? So, but I I gotta say it it does it it does. Uh, it didn't seem fair. I think that's the problem with it to a lot of people. It just made it seem like they're going out of the way to punch Nvidia or pinch AMD in the yeah. face. And it was hidden. That one two combination, you know, didn't sit with people the right way, I think. Right. I mean I think the big problem too is we, we still don't really know. I mean I I got a I got a feeling that Kyle was pretty damn right, right, on this. Mm -hmm. But still you wanna know like so really what was it? I mean, can you show us something to to show us you you wasn't like making this up in video, you know? I was hoping that blog post would have clarified it, but it just basically said, nah, we're not going to fight any of the misinformation. What are you talking about, Brad? They were being were fully transparent. It, it <laughs> makes sense to me. Yeah. The part that amused me in that blog post is uh, they said, uh, the GPU brand should be clearly transparent. No substitute GPUs hidden behind a pile of techno jargon. <laughs> Which, oh. I mean, it's always sit with me, that, that, that hurt my heart, because I really hate how NVIDIA has the, like, the 3 gigabyte GTX 1060 and the 6 gigabyte GTX 1060, and it's not just the memory, they're different chips. But that's hidden behind techno jargon. And then in this post, they're like, things shouldn't be hidden behind techno jargon, and now it's just shaking my head reading the entire thing. Huh. Weird. <laughs> I, you know, and I, I gotta say, uh, I do think it's unfair because definitely a lot of the, a lot of the reaction was it to was for everybody to go out and want to say, oh, anybody who signed up on this GPP, I'm, I'm blacklisting, right? I, I do think people don't, I don't think that was really fair to a lot of those vendors because I don't think people understand the amount of control that Intel, AMD, and Nvidia have over these people who sell their parts. Yeah, but I feel like as a consumer, that's really the only route they had yeah. to make their displeasure known, right? Yeah. So they, they put pressure on an, the middle person, and the middle person then has to go back and put pressure on the actual right. source of it. But I think there should be some empathy for if your entire business model is your supplier that sells you 80% of what you make money off of, it says you're going to do this. It's pretty hard to tell that that vendor your supplier to go right. down sand because i don't disagree i'm just yeah. saying that having the people speak gives that vendor power to go back to that supplier and say hey they're not going to buy any of this stuff so we need to talk about this again right well and I'm then go ahead brad i'm interested to see if even though it's technically dead if like the spirit will live on because like asus already made this new radeon exclusive aries brand and the, the page was acting a little wonky the day the news went live i checked before the show it's back up um, so that's still there, the Radiant Exclusive Aries brand. Um, you know, obviously other companies, it seems, had put things into motion to make their own Radiant Exclusive brand, because AMD said as much. I'm curious to see if that still happens, uh, because GPP could be technically dead, but they've already spent all this money rebranding everything, changing, you know, all that kind of stuff. So even though it's technically dead, the spirit could still live on. We're not going to know for you know, months or whatever. Right. It could be just one cycle, too, where <clears throat> yeah. you've already printed 10,000 boxes. You're going to yeah. use them. You're not going to throw them away. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Turn so. them inside out. <laughs> Print on the other side. Could, you know, it could. they could pull the classic sticker move, right? <laughs> People don't. The Aries cards been, totally look like that. They like, like ROG sticker. They could just like <laughs> ROG sticker on the Aries. ROG Aries on there. And this has happened over the years where at the very, very last minute, they will have to tape over specs to not get sued or they will tape on a brand because they've changed something. So, uh, well, uh, <laughs> Leslie Lye over on uh, YouTube thinks that NVIDIA is uh, misunderstood and that they're trying to do the, the good thing uh, for the consumer. That's right. From the NVIDIA point of view. We're trying to help you not buy a Radeon card. <laughs> We're being good for you. Oh, yes, we also make money off of that, too. But it is, yeah, their their whole point is to not help their competitors. Like I said, I can get that. I can understand if they had to come out and say, hey, we don't necessarily want ROG, but we want Asus to make a, a gaming lineup that's branded just for us. You know, that's cool. Whatever. Yeah. But, but... It's, the, it's the hidden everything and just 
everything about this just sits weird. Yeah, something. I mean, it just smelled. Everything about it smelled weird. Like I could see, like yeah, like I, I mean, yeah. If they said like yeah, we you want to you keep you know Rog for Radeon. And we're like gonna you're saying, that. we're going to make our new brand, right. but that's not going to happen. But they're right? not going to do that because all the the brand recognition is in that name. Right. It just feels like one of those political conversations where someone they sit down at a table and someone says, "I'm not going to tell you I want this, but <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> I just feel like if you showed up at this location, something would happen." You know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree because you're clearly if you're you know Nvidia does do seventy five or eighty percent seventy percent of graphics card sales, so that's the one that you would use your flagship brand on. So even if it doesn't specifically say use your established brands on us, I mean it's very much implied. Right. Uh, so to wrap this up, uh, Ruru Two is asking, uh, when do we think we'll actually see a uh, real GPP contracts leak online? Now that it's you know supposedly dead. I don't. I don't think we will. I mean, people don't nope. don't like to get sued yeah. personally, and they don't like their companies to get sued. The only person that we know that has seen this outside of the people who have signed this contract, well, although I I don't know if Kyle actually said he has seen the actual contracts, but he's definitely seen a lot of the paperwork pertaining to it. Yeah. So I think that's about as close as we're going to get. So yeah, we we will probably never know what the deal is for several years, but... And there's no way he would publish that because that would nuke his sources. Yep. Yeah, because it's very easy to figure out if the yeah. what they gave you can be tracked back to, you know, they change yep. periods, they, you know, I mean, the FBI can look... <laughs> they can look at the ink marks from your laser printer and track it to what you printed to give to somebody. So <laughs> oh, it, it is... What, they you can? Don't that. Oh, no. They can, oh, yes, crap. yes. Uh, you know, I gotta, actually, I one, go. <laughs> one last thing I want to talk about GPP, though, is... is, is how much credit do we give now? Everybody's haters. Everybody hates them. How much credit do we give to the big vendors, the real, the real movers and shakers in the PC industry, for stopping this? If it did, if they did, because that last story I think we saw of Kyle was HP, uh, Dell and HP push back on this, right? For people who mm -hmm. don't know, Dell and HP sell like a third of all the computers in the world, probably. So they, I wouldn't even be surprised if it adds up to more than that. It may be more than a third. It may be, well, yeah. yeah I think it's more than that. You know, four fifths. I not not that much. But <laughs> what about MacBooks? <laughs> oh no, we're not talking about fractions. Yeah, not we not MacBooks. Computers. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, because the thing is, a lot of the big OEMs, and I will say, in the past, the, the vendors have gotten into these little squabbles and they stopped them. Um, years ago, HP, when uh, they bought Voodoo, people don't remember this ancient history, but you could only buy a Crossfire board. And you could buy and you could buy an SLI board. You could not use them interchangeably. You could not run two Radeon cards in a, in a board that supported SLI, no matter what. And that was just simply squabbling between Nvidia and AMD. Of course, AMD said it was never their fault. You know, they blamed uh, Nvidia, of course. But uh, at that point, HP actually came in and said, "Look, we're tired of this crap because." Gamers want to upgrade. They don't want to. Ha they just want to have a choice. Give us a BIOS that supports both of these. And they were actually able to to push through a system, the, one of the, the original Voodoo system from HP that could run either Crossfire and SLI. And that sort of started this avalanche of, oh yeah, okay, let's let's just stop this whole silliness. I'm just bringing up that history. Yay. No, All that's the, a good point. Because I mean, really, we don't know. There are a lot of forces. A lot of money, a lot of politics that were moving behind this, swift currents. But I got to say, if there was somebody who did stop this, I would think it'd be the big OEMs because they're they have the money, they buy enough parts, they can say, "Look, we're not gonna we're not gonna play this way." And then people in forums and on Twitter and stuff are like, "Oh, it's because you know European regulators are looking at it in U.S." But I mean, I'm sure that before this got rolled out, Nvidia had an army of lawyers looking through it all to make sure it's all technically legal. Yeah. So I'm inclined to believe exactly what you're saying that somebody's like, nope, we're not, we're not interested in this whatsoever. Right. I yeah. just, I just want to give a shout out because I do think probably that had something to do with it. And you know, the whole internet, all the, all the, a lot of people don't like, you know, the big tier one guys, gals. But you know, go ahead, give them some due credit for this. Probably, I think. Yeah. Nice. Muscle. See. Yep. Nice. Yeah, I still don't know what the glass thing was. Mm, do you? No. Uh, we actually we did have somebody. Uh, oh no, I'm not gonna be able to find it quick enough. Uh, Vignesh 
Bala Suramanian uh, says he got the Conkite reference. Uh, yeah, see, Gordon. thank God. We got one person on YouTube who got you the got reference. It's all right too because Adam gets my name wrong all the time. Yeah, you touched a life today, Gordon. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> uh, before we move to the next topic, though. I want to do a, uh, a a quick you know PSA to say you know thank you everyone for tuning in every week all you people who listen on the podcast we appreciate it uh, you know we're trying to get spread out there so as much as you can share uh, to your friends you know if you think they'll like uh, the discussions happen here share it uh, you know like us on uh, and subscribe and and all that good stuff uh, but you know we're we're trying to reach more people so that we would tr- appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts if you share uh, this awesome show with your friends so you know just we don't ask for it too often, but I thought it'd be a nice time to say, hey, you know, uh, sh- share it around. Even if you disagree with us. Hey, listen to what these morons said yeah. about GPP. <laughs> Idiots. I could say something bad about consoles. There you go. I mean, yeah. when aren't you, Gordon? <laughs> I can't help it. Perfect. <laughs> it's like a tick. It's, not, it's, you know, you don't. It just comes natural. It's just what he does. Yeah, you just. Yeah, you know, I'm. It's just it ain't never. You're never gonna get a Red Sox fan to to hug a Yankees fan. I don't. I don't care. Even if they're <laughs> they're on fire, they probably wouldn't pour that bucket of sand on them. It's just not gonna. <laughs> so, GPP is dead, but something else from Nvidia is about to come to life. Yeah, what? yeah finally Ooh. here after what a year and a half. Nice. Uh, yeah, 2017 CES it was announced. Oh, God. Yep, and I remember that. And I got to say, because it's the second time I've seen it since <laughs> CES of 2017, <laughs> it looks just as good. G-Sync HDR, finally here, the long-awaited G-Sync HDR. So, yeah, you went to an event last uh, last week, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Got your uh, some, some screen time with it, with an awesome console game, Final Fantasy 15. Is it? I didn't know that was a console yeah, it's game. Very, Final Fantasy is a console game. Really? Uh, it was born on the console. It was on the console for a long time. That but it's best on PCs. <laughs> best on PC. <laughs> it, it was just weird to see you play Final Fantasy in, in that video. Everyone it, should go watch it. It's, it's I mean, kind of funny. You, you would did it ex- already. I, I use yeah. a keyboard and mouse for it. <laughs> yeah. It's, and let's, I'm sorry, consoles don't exist anymore. They're just PCs that don't work with mice and keyboards. But then why know. do you hate So them? it has been a year and a half. <laughs> Can you give us a rundown what G-Sync HDR <laughs> Actually, is? So G-Sync HDR is basically, uh, it is HDR brought down to a computer monitor. We had a long talk about this. What exactly does it mean? You know, does it, uh, does it mean it's, I'm going to say this to make one certain YouTube fan happy. Does it mean it's, you know, eight plus two, you know, with frame rate control or is it true 10 bit? Is it a thousand nits? The panel I saw, which was the Acer X27, I believe, was a thousand nits, uh, 25 by 1440, you know, uh, 2560 by 1440, 144 hertz overclock. It wasn't 4K? Oh, 4K, you're right. Oh, wait, yeah. was it? Was yeah, it 4K. 4K. Yeah, yeah, yeah 4K. sorry. It's, it's been a week and a half already. I can't remember. <laughs> it, it was a, a 4K panel, you know, and it, I think it was high frame rate too, so. 144. Yeah, 144 4K and a thousand nits, and I gotta say, next to it they had an older Acer 27 inch IPS 4K IPS again. So we're not talking crap, and that that uh, that uh, G Sync that X27 with G Sync HDR looked fantastic. So HDR makes a huge difference, you know. Like uh, when when I got yeah. my new uh, TV, it was an upgrade from 1080 to 4K, and then sure you see a little bit more you know resolution detail, but man, that HDR. When that kicks in, like that's that's a huge difference. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and they they you know Nvidia was talking about there were a couple different effects. And I, unfortunately, I don't I, I don't have the notes in front of me, but there 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 are two things that happen when you crank up the brightness. It actually increases perceived contrast and colors. It, like things just look better because it was brighter. Like there's actually some some dude it's named after. And the second thing is, if it's brighter, you actually perceive more resolution, which is pretty interesting i think i i I don't know why that is but i i just like it's so amazing because the the, uh, 4k ips panel just look just dull next to the hdr (laughs) panel and and i gotta say i can't wait to try it i saw it at ces 2017 when it was first announced and it blew my mind to see it like i've said it in a recent precinct 2 review too an explosion went off on the screen and my body actually physically like <laughs> jumped away from it. So I'm real interested to see how this turns out. Yeah, and you know it's zone lit, so they basically have I think it was three hundred and eighty four zones on this in order to hit that that oh. thousand um nits uh in brightness. 
and just look really good. It just makes you think like, oh, maybe this is, it's worth it, you know, to, to do an upgrade. You know, I'm not sure I'm really into 4K, but, you know, I'd probably want a 25 by 1440. Did they talk anything well, about the uh, the details of, like, latency or, you know, what kind of card it's going to need to drive this? I mean, huh. probably a TI, right, <laughs> at least? <laughs> uh, There's no card that will drive that at its max frame rate okay. right now. <laughs> it makes you wonder if maybe they'll be announcing a video oh. card that can support it oh. soon. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of, you know, maybe... Uh, I genuinely thought it would have been launched by now because I'm shocked that they're launching these monitors when there isn't, you know, graphics cards that can support it. <laughs> it right. just seems weird. Right. Uh, and so, and again, you're asking me about latency. They did say it's so the interesting is, I was like, well, so does G Sync HDR mean it has to be a certain latency? Does it have to be a certain, you know, response? It just, and they're like, look, what it means is because they're going to, you know, uh, vendors from making different glass will be going to, you know, their monitor partners and they'll be making these panels. They will, just like G-Sync, just like everybody hates about G-Sync, right? Although this is probably the one thing that makes G-Sync so awesome is they send it to NVIDIA, NVIDIA looks at it, and they go, well, you need to work on this. We don't really like, like how this looks. So it really is, it just means, and I got to say, this is the hard part. It just means it's G-Sync, HDR, and it meets our standards. What those standards are, we don't know. Again, it doesn't mean it's it's six plus two. Doesn't mean it's eight plus two. Doesn't mean it's true ten bit. You know, I I don't I don't know. Um, they basically are saying no, and uh, and also for latency, they're like, look, it also means you know, because clearly they're saying, look, people like say, oh, why would I just why would I do this? Why not just get a TV, right? Four K TV HDR, and they're like, those things suck. You know, the input latency on this is horrible because they're not made to. Actually, a lot of them are, are getting better. The new I TV I got had uh, real high marks on uh, art, artings, ratings, whatever you I say. I guess uh, we'd have to find out. I mean, yeah. I mean, but I think the thing is, I'm sure this is better. But, but. maybe the res maybe the latency. I, are they talking about for gaming? Actually, they were measuring the input latency. Because yeah, they they have they have a sub uh, a sub number just for gaming that oh, includes nice. latency huh. and a bunch of other stuff. So we'll have to see. Yeah. But I mean, but again, I think oh. one of the issues is Adam. Um, if you go to Costco and you buy the first one that's oh, in the front course. door, oh, of buy the soap. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just HDR. I know it's good, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. It might oh, be no, the definitely. worst panel for gaming. So what they're saying uh, is, and, yeah, go ahead. And a lot of TVs that do have the gaming modes work great if you're sitting on the couch. But if you're buying it to play Counter-Strike with a mouse and keyboard or whatever, it doesn't meet those standards. Right. And it is a little, I mean, I mean with G-Sync, you knew it meant variable refresh rate. Um, but I guess even there, it didn't mean it necessarily had to hit a certain refresh rate, though. It just, it just, mm -hmm. it just means there are standards. So, which is what everybody has never liked about G Sync, because then now you have a delay getting product to market, and then people don't like it because they charge you to get that certification and testing. Well, th this sounds like really bleeding edge stuff that they should charge a premium for, because we're focusing on the HDR, we're focusing on the G Sync, but. Like this is gonna be; these are gonna be one of the first 144 hertz FreeSync pan, uh, G-Sync panels, or just panels whatsoever. 4K. That's the word. I'm sorry. There aren't 144 hertz 4K panels right now. So right. I'm really excited about that. What do you beyond think? the HDR, beyond all that stuff? <laughs> Speaking huh? of premium, how much are we talking? Yeah, <laughs> money, money, money. <laughs> They didn't say. I, I got to say they did not. They didn't know because I I don't know if they just kind of leave. And that means either they're going to shock you because it's a good price or shock you because. Damn, I mean, I can't imagine oh, yeah. this is going to be anything but, you know, premium pricing because exactly of what Brad just said. This is the first 4K 144 hertz panel that also has G-Sync and HDR. And 384 backlight zones i mean that's a lot i yeah. mean quantum dots to make it the hdr look even better i mean did, yeah did they, yeah and it had a quantum dot like did, did they did they say last year what it was i mean is i always kind of got the feeling it was gonna be like eight hundred dollars but what <laughs> no. i just kind of guess no you think it'll be more no Yikes. way no, man they never they never officially said they never people said guessed 1500 yeah i, oh. I, would, I would guess 1500 yeah. to 2000 yeah i would too oh. like 800 you're talking about a standard g-sync panel that maybe <laughs> is running at 25 by 14 <laughs> at just, maybe 75 hertz <laughs> that, that 1500 dollars isn't that gonna like bump up into a, a bfgd then I mean, 
Uh, I shudder to think what those are going to cost. <laughs> those are the 60 inch, right? 60 inch, yeah. I think they are. 50 inch. Those uh, are going to cost nothing because they're not going to come out. Theoretically coming. <laughs> they're going to come out. Never. I think I think they'll come out, Adam. No, wrong. You just add wrong. add fourteen months to it; it'll come out. <laughs> I, I tell you what. Just an aside. Speaking of G Sync panels, man, that Best Buy had a deal earlier this week for a two hundred and forty hertz Alienware G Sync panel mm, for three hundred and thirty yeah. bucks. Yeah, Whoa. I'm just like, mmm. There's been some great good. prices on monitors since fall. Yeah. Like yeah. Last like Black Friday last year, for some reason it was like monitor season. And Elena, didn't you get a new monitor? Oh, I did just buy a new yes. monitor. I finally got a, a 4K uh, panel. What do you? And you were complaining and about it's it. It's got though, FreeSync, right? right? I didn't complain about it. You heard it as complaining because I mentioned something that had to do with consoles. Oh, <laughs> consoles. Oh, is that it? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. I got a I got a 4K panel with FreeSync support, oh. and it supports FreeSync over HDMI, which means I can use it with my Xbox One X if I want to. With what? Awesome. I know. I said it. Oh. Xbox One X. And the HDR. Ex- oh, this is an HDR panel anyway. Never mind. Yeah. Ignore me. <laughs> no, no, no. There's no way because Elaine ain't putting out 1500. No, big I'm not. Ones for I got that. no. My budget was like around 300, so I said, "All right." I'll That's do it. crazy, though. Still, 4K uh, variable refresh for. Yeah, it's IPS too. Wow, and IPS. Yeah, no, I didn't want a TN panel. Huh. I don't really play a lot of Twitch games. Hmm. Get a good deal. Yeah, I got it for about 320. That's not bad. So right. when? So when are these uh, G Sync HDR panels coming? <sighs> Pretty soon, I think. Uh, they are imminent. Basically, within like I think they should be arriving. Probably within a few weeks. So, but you know, I got to ask though, if this thing is fifteen hundred dollars, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, if we're lucky. If we're lucky, just I'm. I'm gonna guess that's too high. I'm gonna guess it'll be no. a thousand bucks. Yeah, it's gonna be a thousand. I that's, like, hey, I'm guessing thousand dollars. You willing to eat paper? Fifteen hundred is way too much for a desktop. No, panel. have you seen how some how expensive some of them are? I think I was looking at one the other day that was like thirteen hundred. Yeah, if you Ooh. look at the pro grade HDR yeah. panels Ooh. that have true HDR and a thousand nits brightness, they're Ooh. over a thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, but, but here's here's the thing though, isn't this? Because I <laughs> he's going to justify up, it now. Free sync versus G sync. No, here's to bring it to bring it bring it back to to free sync versus G sync. I I gotta say, are you really going to go out and buy an expensive free sync panel to couple with what your RX five eighty card or maybe a Vega if you lucked into one? It's just like. I mean, it's clear that there's a new part coming from NVIDIA. You know, you're going to be able to push 4K with whatever this thing is. You, you just don't know. When the hell is AMD going to come up with something you can use? If you're making a big investment in a panel, do you want to really invest in FreeSync? You know? Uh, $300 Elena different. just did. I just Yeah, that's did. not $300. That's hey, more for, for breakfast. For, for Elena, th- oh, wow. Mr. Moneybags well, over here. You're talking about, like, the, <laughs> I should apply to not just the you know, 1%. <laughs> the 0.1 percent of gamers who are in the market for 144 hertz 4k monitor and the hardware that can drive it <laughs> yeah. that's like such a minority yeah i yeah. think FreeSync and radeon do just fine i mean through a 144 uh hertz monitors especially with vega but isn't and, there you know, like a 4k but i mean do people are people really are they are they going all in when they do that? Because I sort of think, since we already know seven percent of people run GeForce, it's you know you go to buy a new monitor, you think maybe it's time to get you know a G Sync panel, you know. Or, I just kind of wonder at the high end of FreeSync two really makes any sense with the current cards. What do you mean by high end? Like well, 4K panel? Yeah, I mean anything that costs five hundred dollars to me and up is is a high end panel. Oh, well, I mean, and sure, but I don't think you're seeing a lot of FreeSync panels in that range. Mm, I mean, there's some FreeSync two monitors that came out recently. And there's there's been a few few other ones. Yeah, I mean, it's also possible that when because we've talked about this on the show before, where a monitor is something that you kind of invest in, right? Because you're expecting it to last you like what eight, ten years. Yeah, minimum. people use them longer so than they should. So it could just be a thing like me, where I'm pro- I'm not going to be playing at 4K on my PC, but I have it because one, I'm going to use it for productivity, and two, in the future, eventually my hardware will catch up to it because I'll have that panel for a good ten years at least. The panel I'm replacing is ten years old. So you're locked into Radeon probably for... for no, no, because the thing is, yeah. a good panel is a good panel. <laughs> I mean, if you get it because you have Radeon today, there's no reason you couldn't use... It doesn't cost you extra beyond minimal amounts to get a FreeSync panel. No, you're locked in. 
You're right. well. I'm just You're saying the main You're feature. Done. One of the most awesome features is variable refresh rates, and you can't. You know, if yeah, you can't but, use that feature, but realistically. If you're not talking, I mean, there's a lot of GeForce owners who are in that lower range. Realistically, how many of them are actually going to be spending extra on a G-Sync panel? So it's not really reaching that audience, part of the audience anyway. So if they happen to have a monitor that supports FreeSync, it doesn't really, it's just like a wash, period. I, I know. I mean, I... I, th I think if you've got the money to buy, uh, you know, two GTX... 1080 TIs to power uh, 4K 144 hertz bleeding <laughs> edge G Sync HDR panel. If you care that much, you'd probably be willing and able to swap those components out three or four years down the line. True. Uh, <laughs> Samsonite Dove on YouTube says the cheapest G Sync HDR monitor is 3000 including uh, VAT, according to a Nantech article on April 10th. Dang. That popped up. That popped up uh, in stores in europe it popped up but you can't take european pricing as a given for us or even official announcement pricing those weren't official loot prices i don't think that's true but still that's a that's a lot maybe yeah. that's in um whatever the currency is in greece so that's like five dollars <laughs> not to make fun of greece's currency situation not but. to make fun of it but we're making fun of it <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure it's bad whatever it is Oh, I did hear something. Uh, I one other thing when I was at the meeting, they did talk about a new program uh, because they think people are not going to understand uh, G Sync. It's a G Sync Partner Program, and <laughs> it's called <laughs> Promote Transparency with uh, G Sync uh, HDR and G Sync. It's not, it's not anything. Uh, they just want you to brand all free sync as stuff that sucks. <laughs> and you want to Apparently, I, vendors may not go for that. I'm just kidding. I made that up completely. Oh, Hopefully goodness. nobody's still sore over oh, those things. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Too soon, Gordon. Uh, Too soon. Enigmatastic. Uh, <laughs> GPP. The other GPP. G-Sync Partner Program. You heard it here first. We made it up completely. Not true at all. Uh, Enigmatastic on uh, Twitch uh, says, uh, uh, or he's wondering, uh, does FastSync, is that compatible with Vulkan? I don't know off the top of my head. I haven't used it with Vulcan. Yeah, okay. I, I have to look up FastSync now. I haven't even heard of it. Is that like Fast another? FastSync is. Oh. Like it's good. It's good if you're playing very very high refresh rate games. Interesting. And I'm not sure if it's compatible with Vulcan. You'd have to Google it. Sorry, man. I don't know that off the top of my head. All right, well, uh, I guess we're going to get one in for testing at some point, right? Yes, yes, and I, I think they're very interested in seeing how it does against that Samsung you like there so much, Brad. Oh. So am I. I'm very interested to see it as well, because I really like this. I tested, for the people who don't know, a few weeks ago, a uh, Samsung FreeSync 2 monitor, and it's not perfect, but it's one of the best monitors I've ever used, if not the best monitor I've ever used, but it did have some flaws, and it's only 600 nits of brightness, which has been a problem with some of the early... PC HDR panels. So I'm really curious to see how G Sync HDR at a full thousand nits holds up. Uh, you know, and I, I do want to mention this is the one thing we saw on BFGD at CES this year. And uh, I did uh, again see this. I don't know if it's ever really going to be solved immediately, but so it's a thousand nits. So you can imagine it's like staring into a super bright flashlight almost. <laughs> uh, you have the shutters and the LCD, they flip the block, the block light out of it. But you, the, the intensity of that light where the shutters are open just for like small um, game UI kind of stuff, it has kind of a, a global cue to it, right? You know what we're talking about. We saw it with the BFGD where at one point a mouse got moved across the screen and you could see the zones lighting up and they would turn off. So local dimming, yeah. So, yeah. Which is which is a good feature, you know, when, when you need it. But, yeah, when there's a stark contrast and uh, especially off-axis, like even on my new TV, you know, I, I can't remember how many d local dimming zones it has. But, you know, on axis, it's actually not too bad and yeah. I'm at a distance for a TV. But on a monitor, when you're up close and you know maybe you're you're moving your head around like who you, you start to see those zones and it, it it can be it can be bothersome I'm, I'm curious to see how that holds up on a, a normal size monitor like the ones that are coming out soon because i imagine on those bf gds that are you know 60 inches big if they still only have 384 zones like these other ones right then i mean that would you know intensify the issue 
Yeah, and I will say I didn't see it wasn't as bad. You couldn't actually see the outline of the zone, which we saw on the early BFG all oh, engineering sample stuff. Yeah, way early. it was early. Yeah. I didn't see the actual zones, but there was kind of a global kind of glow, glow where the UI was. Like if you had you know like letters in one area and you moved across the black dark sky, it would just kind of you could well, see. And glow you got, a little I bit. mean, you also got to assume at at, at a thousand nits. You know, like w whatever that uh, the is on the screen. You know, so whatever coding it is, like yeah. that's bright enough that 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 could be reflecting off of the inside of that glass well, or panel or whatever, and just you know, like yeah. I, and uh, yeah, I think it's very much like if you take a flashlight and you shine it through your hand, you can't see through my hand, but you're putting a bright enough flashlight on there. <laughs> You're like, hey, I can see light yeah. through your flesh. <laughs> so I don't know how you can ever really solve that. This may be something we sort of have to sort of accept. I kind of wonder maybe uh, game developers can fix it by um, changing the UI so it's, you know, this doesn't pop up maybe as much. Maybe not 100% brightness, you yeah. know, like, yeah. Yeah, but I gotta say, it look it looks spectacular. And Brad knows you've seen it, and you've seen it as well, Adam. Right? HDR. Yeah. Have yes. you seen it I side have. by side? Not side by side, but there's there is a difference for sure. Yeah, but you've seen it on a console though, so it was a it was no. A actually, slow, it was on, it was on that uh, it was on a TV and that Dell we looked at a long oh, time okay. ago. All right. <laughs> See, he can't me, help, he can't uh, help himself. He it's really like can't. <laughs> And we're For me, I think, at least in the demos I've seen at trade shows, and now that I've tested this FreeSync 2 monitor, even though it's a lesser amount, to me, I think that HDR looks more visually impressive than upgrading from 1080p to 4K. Oh, yeah. So I'm really excited to see him coming out. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, for, I, for gaming, hell yeah. 4K is nice only to me on a huge monitor. Like 30, I'd have to have 32, 32 inch Really? Because everything, the UI, is just gets a little tough. 32, it's great. It's, it's, it's great to have the real estate, but... Like a twenty. Remember that Dell made that twenty-four inch four K panel. Ooh, oh, twenty-four. You had to have small. Bionic Vision. <laughs> it looked great though. The pixel density was just like insane. Twenty-seven is not bad. Yeah, it's I just like had to scale ground. up, scale up the windows. Yeah, pumps. Uh, we have a uh, fifteen minutes left to get into our last topic. Yes. Are we good? Do we have any questions left? Uh, uh, HDR? No, no, we're we're good right now. Nobody in the audience is planning on buying a three thousand dollar G Sync HDR panel. Uh, whatever it'll be in USD. No. Yeah. I don't think that's right. That can't be right. No. It's in Greek dollars. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they is. Uh, but of course, uh, last topic, uh, gratefully, uh, a, was it a, is it a retailer in Europe? Um, an IT services supplier. <laughs> oh my God. Oops. <laughs> uh, <laughs> boy. Uh, blue chip creating computers apparently um, posted uh, the what to expect from Intel and AMD for the rest of the year, I think, right? Do you, do you want me yeah, to... they posted a video on YouTube oh, yeah. that looks like Adam's it was supposed the... to go to their uh, partners, but was accidentally made public. Yeah, you want to put that up there? So I'm going to bring it up here. YouTube. Oh, they put it on YouTube? Yeah. That doesn't <laughs> seem like a simple what? oops. That seems like somebody in the company was like, hee hee hee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just... You fire me? Oops. Well, F oh, you. Wait, yeah. the, the, the graphic is gone. Adam's can try it again. Well, yeah, well, well, let's let's uh, let's tell people what they're seeing. Uh, then I, okay, so it up. again, we are seeing a, a apparently um, accidentally leaked on purpose uh, a Intel and AMD chipset update slide from Blue Chip com Creating Computers. Um, The big news I, I have in front of me here, I got to say, so that little... Dash line is is kind of where we're at right now, and then what you should expect in in July is the AMD B450 chipset. Mm, okay, mm -hmm. not too exciting. Mm -hmm. Wait, there's something before that. Oh, there is. Oh, yes, June 18th. Yeah, isn't that weird? Who made this slide? Well, no, because Computex is that divider. So oh, is that the Computex? Yeah, yeah. it's Computex. Oh, right. It's Computex. So basically, they're kind of using that as a divider in the year. I think. Ah, uh, I see. Which Computex is in about three weeks, and we will see. The first eight core engineering sample target June 2018 for CFL S, which is, of course, uh, Coffee Lake S part desktop, LGA 1151 part. There's and it sounds like at Computex, we're going to be seeing uh, AMD Z490 motherboards, too, is what this says. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I June wonder 18th. what's going to be new there. I'm very interested to see what's what's new in Z. Well, I mean, the new the new uh, four X four seventy boards. They basically have Storm I, and they have improved power handling for the new chips. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what more they add. 
Uh, and then also, of course, uh, again, B450, which sounds like just probably a you know low end part, right? Oh, that's Computex. I mean, that's an upgrade to uh, <coughs> B350. 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 Although I do have a question going back to the Z. Yeah. F- 490. Like that seems very confusing that they would actually choose the same letter that oh, okay. Intel uses. No, I know they all are like that. If you look at it. Yeah, I can't keep them straight anymore. It's just <laughs> weird though, because they like last last year they purposely chose X, right, and that kind of distinguished it. Like, why would you per- anyway? Anyway. Yeah. I, well, I now they're a hundred ahead though. See, they're at four ninety. Intel's at well, theoretically at three ninety. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, but to me, it's just like it's so easy to. I can't even keep the model number straight because they overlap so much. <laughs> Terrible. Like, so what? So uh, August. Oh, actually, let me save this. August uh, 18th, we should expect Threadripper, TR4, Colfax. Um, I don't know what Colfax is. It's a basically the second generation of uh, Threadripper. You know, I'll basically expect it to be like um, Zen Plus, right? These are just the, the better, better dies. Much improvements and a new X three ninety nine chipset. What's Intel's X two ninety nine? Yeah, <laughs> isn't there a rumor course, that yeah, Intel's going to do a new X three ninety nine chipset? Yeah, yeah, they just keep going, keep on keeping on. See now, I, so I people look, people need to just like, oh, this, this, this. I could be totally up with Intel or AMD coming out with chipset partner program. Okay, they're coming out <laughs> saying, "Look, <laughs> yeah, no one can keep the damn chipset name straight." Was, I mean, you got a point on that right? front for sure. The only reason I pointed out the Z one is because I feel like Z three hundred and seventy is a much more common sort of thing that people will be looking at rather than the X two ninety nine X three ninety nine chipsets. Mm-hmm. So just, there's just much more room to confuse a whole bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're look. We follow this all the time, and even we're like, uh, which one is that Z <laughs> something X something? You can't. I mean, it's like, insane. And at this point, every time I I buy something for work because we don't have the part, I always make sure that the socket is the right one because that's the <laughs> only way. I just like ultra sure I'm Unless buying the right Intel. thing. That's the worst thing ever. That whole uh, coffee lake does not work on. On KB Lake, Sky Lake. But at least I know I'm not getting the wrong manufacturer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that would suck too, right? But Thank, thank goodness for a PC part picker. <laughs> and speaking of new Intel chipsets, look, we got uh, third quarter. There's going to be Z390, which is an improvement over Z, what's the, 270? No, 370. Right now it's 370. 370. Yeah, and that's for Canon Lake, and it says CNL, which I'm going to assume is Canon Lake PCH. So it'll be a new chipset for uh, can, the Canon Lake CPUs, which I can't remember. Those are that's... 14 plus, 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 plus? Plus. Plus. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the interesting part to me looking at this roadmap is that it was expected Z390 would launch to support the new 8-core chips. Like Intel's rumored to have an 8-core chip coming out. But if you look at this roadmap right underneath that Z390, it says the first A-core engineering samples are going out to people in June, but it's expected to launch closer towards the end of the year. Huh. So. Oh, you're right. I see that. That's why that's down there. Oh. Outlined. Interesting. That That's that's the part that made me go, hmm, interesting. Because I expect them to launch simultaneously. But, I mean, Z370 is lacking some stuff compared to the lower-end chipsets, like native USB 3.1 Gen 2, I think it's the fast one. Wait, which one? Support. The 10 gigabit <laughs> per second one. Yeah, the fast the fast USB is now built right into the chipset on like the H310 and the other new uh, Intel boards. It's not into the Z370. Yeah. So I'm not surprised to see a refresh. It also has better Wi Fi and stuff. So it makes sense to release a new motherboard for them. Yeah, it's just interesting. It's so late, though. That's. And well, I, we just I... saw, I mean, those chips were delayed. Yeah, ten nanometer chips were delayed. They're going to be rolling out Whiskey Lake at some point. So I just hope that I, I swear to God, if if this eight core Canon Lake, you know, eight eight core whatever it is, the eight core eleven fifty one part comes out and it's not compatible with Z three seventy, I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, you would think that they would just like, okay, hey, here's eight core three seventy was engineered for that. It's going to work. But if they're going to say, yeah, you got to wait till this Z three ninety chipset in Q. Four, <laughs> but we don't know because Intel is very conservative with chipsets. They're like, oh, you know, we don't want to get sued, right. so we're going to make sure everything works. So, a lot of people have given AMD crap because uh, 
if you buy a new one of the new chips with one of the original gen motherboards, then sometimes it won't boot because the motherboard was built for first gen Ryzen. So you right. have to get a boot kit. I like, like p- some people complain about that, but I think that's a great program. I'm glad to see AMD does it because I think it's, you know, keeping motherboard compatibility for longer is a yeah. greater good than yeah. the inconvenience of having to go through the boot kit process. Yep. Yeah, no, it's worth it, and 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 it does make everything very easy. It's like, I mean, I, yep. it's really funny because there, I think I've seen facts where be like, oh, can I use uh, you know, Z twenty twenty seven hundred on this chipset? Is it M four? Yes. Can I use it on this board? Is it M four? Yes. You know, basically, if it fits in the socket, it's M four. It's it's yes. going to work. That's pretty much the easy way. Whereas like that whole coffee lake, KB lake, just sucked. I was like, we're looking at doing a a, a Pentium coffee lake build. And I was like, oh, wow, this, this Z270 board is really cheap, right? But uh, Or not Z270, but, you know, a 2-series board was like, wow, that's pretty cheap. But no, it does not work with <laughs> with Coffee Lake, even the bottom end one, which I, it just, that's insane to me. Just bitching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cyberwolf makes a, a, a funny joke that I know Helena and I will enjoy. Uh, if it fits, it sits. <laughs> <laughs> if it fits, it sits? Yeah. That's a good one. Wow. Okay. I wonder who got fired over this, though. Or maybe they don't even care. Yeah. Right. I really. I mean. Yeah. Whew. If if an employee intentionally posted it as a "screw you guys, I'm out" thing, that's one thing. I can tell you that was not intentionally posted by the corporation itself. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it does definitely put to rest those theories, like, "Oh, well, Intel and AMD are intentionally leaking these roadmaps." Well, this, this is both of theirs in the same one, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, maybe they're they're cooperating on the leak to help you get ready for to not confuse Z490 and Z390 <laughs> and X. It's almost like they with, need some sort of partner program X3, to help you. Yeah, partner yep, Intel, AMD, part, chipset partner program. They, can't they just like get in a room, a round table? I mean, hell, we're going to North Korea. They, they should like they should get together and just say, okay, you can have X and we'll take Y. But like, no, no, then, no, X is cooler than Y. Okay, you could. You, Nobody you, likes Y. Everyone likes X and Z. Why is that? What's wrong with Y? I don't know. Boring. Extreme Y is like. Eh. Actually, I I like the Y Why's wing. It's one of my favorite Star Wars uh, ships, the Y I, wing. It did look good, but I got to say, it never ever did anything no. ever in the Star Wars universe. Well, it, it did some bombing runs. Did it? Yeah, I think so. It just seemed like pretty <laughs> unsuccessful. But I would rather be in a Y wing than the B wing. I'm sorry. No, B-wing's dude, B wing's my favorite. B wing's you, awesome. You're just. No, I'm not. No, come yeah, on. The B-Wing's <laughs> awesome. I love that design. Have you ever seen the Lego of the B-Wing? Like the one that's like <laughs> thousands of pieces? Like, oh, man. I want to <laughs> do that. I want to do that one. That's Adam, an awesome Lego. Let me, let me tell you, in the Star Wars script I have written, that they did not take at Disney. <laughs> They're like, we're making our attack run. They're like, okay, A-Wings, go on the left flank. Uh, Y-Wings on the right wing. Okay, uh, X wings lock S foils into its hack position, and then I look over and you're like, B wing, what are you doing? Uh, I'm rotating. Yeah, well, which is awesome. What does that, what does that do? Because we spread the the well, S foils, it, it makes the lasers go right. But the B wing is like, that, this is your whole thing is you rotate around that center shaft. Yeah, uh, but then how does that un- work? You, what does un- that do? Until you go in for the bombing run. Uh, and then it locks up position. You but know? The, I'm just saying, like, like, <laughs> like you're distracting me with your rotating B wing, B wing flight. Can you green green flight? Can you stop rotating? <laughs> it doesn't do anything. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything. And it's like it's like going really fast. Like, whoo! It's like a it's like a di- whatever fidget spinner. No, it's like slow. It's like a rotisserie chicken thing. <laughs> you think that's gonna throw off that tie interceptor? No. Yeah, man. You can't you can't lock onto those B wings, you know? They're coming in for that bombing run. Uh, okay, you, you can stop rotating now. Okay, we get it. You can rotate <laughs> B wing green flight. We get it. We're going for attack run. Stop rotating. <laughs> That would just be like, uh, okay, look, what, 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 really, how did you get into this big one? What were you flying before? Uh, Cloud City patrol car. Oh, the thing with two cars? Yeah, oh, yeah, I flew that. I was the co-pilot. You didn't even, you weren't even the pilot. You were the co-pilot of the Cloud City. <laughs> Why not just put the seat next to the other guy or behind the other gal? Like, why is it like separated? <laughs> 
I think the yeah, only Star thing Wars. I'm going to remember of this discussion is that something from Star Wars got compared to rotisserie chicken. It does. <laughs> but the thing is, I think it's like slowly turning. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool, B-Wing. Wait, you but... have to stop. You're killing me. <laughs> if you look, look, green flight, if you stop rotating your B-Wing, you might actually hit it. Stop rotating. <laughs> Can we no, we're move confusing on? them dying. now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would oh, expect they're like much. inside behind the pilot. There's probably actually a rotisserie chicken. Like it's actually <laughs> rotating. <laughs> <laughs> and Brad is like, let me out of here. Oh. Let me out of here. Being, <laughs> B wings are awesome. All right. So uh, leaked CPU roadmaps. Anything else we want to say before we uh, have to, to, to get out of here? Are we not taking Q and A this week? Any, any last questions from people, or are I they mean, just uh, gas? I was just going to ask if there's anything else for the uh, the CPU roadmaps. Uh, I was just looking at B wing stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, hey, I I'm Threadripper. I'm I'm interested to see how Threadripper does. You know, to me, that's the exciting thing on the the roadmap. Yeah. You think they'll shift prices with Threadripper like they did? Uh, uh, oh, the second cool. gen Ryzen. It's possible. I'm almost putting this back too. on topic here. Sorry. Oh, I here's my question. Uh, sorry. Brad, if everybody has to go to the bathroom, how much is eight core Coffee Lake S going to call? Two hundred. Mm. Five. Yeah. Wow, really? They haven't really been trying to compete on price. Five, because that's going to be the. I mean, it's going to have the exact same core count and the IPC and single thread lead. It's going to be like, especially if they brand it, like, what was it called? The 8086 Anniversary Edition, if they, like, manage to tie nostalgia to it, too. Oh, that would be cool. 500 bucks. With a special box. It would come in a retail box just ex exactly like the original 8086, which I don't even think you probably could get retail, but, you know. And then they could take our advice and have it make the sound when you open it up. Dun, 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 dun. Worth, the, worth the premium. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For I went to... I mean, but non, I mean, they can't all be that much though, right? I mean, besides 80, I think that 886, isn't that just going to be like a limited edition kind of thing? Or you think the whole lineup will be? I wouldn't be surprised if there's only one eight core chip. Oh, wow. Hmm. $500. If there's one, at least to start, like if they make it, hey, this is the fancy 8086 anniversary edition, eight core chip, 500 bucks. And then for Whiskey Lake or whatever. We they got, might have more options. We got people in the chat. Uh, we got a lot of people. You know, E Lopez says three fifty. Leslie and Rusty Ooh, say nope. four hundred. Samsonite says four sixty to five hundred. Uh, a I lot mean, of people undercutting. At the lowest, I would realistically go for would probably be like four fifty. Um, yeah. But because you already have the six core chip at like three sixty right now, three fifty. Yeah, but you compress the stack when it comes out. I think. Uh, I'm 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 with everyone. I think three fifty. You know, three fifty nine. Wow. Probably that's what the, the eighty seven hundred K costs. Like yeah, I said, the six cores are at that price already. We got right eight now. cores now. Right? Six cores every bit as good as eight cores. Oh no, eight cores out better than than but six cores. Intel yeah. never slashes their prices like the way AMD has. Well, they have. They've done some price compression. I mean, yes, like by ten or fifteen dollars. <laughs> well, <laughs> not huge. Yeah, you know it's funny because I think we all get very excited about well, eighty seven hundred K. We're like, wow, six core CPU, incredible for three hundred and fifty sorta if you're lucky. But there was that six core Broadway Lee part, and um, right, so those were about three twenty. Those LGA or the X X ninety nine. Remember the Broadway Lee yeah. and the. Um, as well, yep. parts they had those. Yep. They did sort of have those three fifty six cores before, so I guess it hasn't really gone down. I guess if you think about it that way, it hasn't. So I can't imagine that they would bring out a core and say, "Hey, you know how much we used to charge for these? Here, have it for three fifty. Ruru two, Ruru two on uh, Twitch thinks four twenty. <laughs> Blaze it up four twenty. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't feed Adam. <laughs> what man? <laughs> now I tell you, I think five hundred bucks, four fifty at the lowest. Gotta tell you, I wouldn't be surprised if it's just an introductory taste. If it's the uh, hey, it's the eight oh six anniversary edition. This is like as many cores as you can get. Match and Ryzen, higher IPC, higher single thread. This is the chip to get five hundred bucks, and it's playing on your nostalgia. Yeah. I mean, and also the thing is, if we're, if we're looking at Q4 launch, because what they have to do is they have to get the clocks and thermals and the yields to get 
to where it's going to be faster than a 2700X, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it could be fairly limited. That'd be kind of a bummer, but I just think it's got to be, I don't know. I just think they're just going to, it'll be 359. My guess is 359. It'll slot in at the top, the top, top consumer part. Paper? <laughs> Retail price, because of extremely limited availability, will push it up into the 380, 390. I mean, it would be sweet if that happened, but I just don't see it as a realistic thing. I'm, I'm betting. I'm. It's. It doesn't make sense to sell it for five hundred dollars. You're betting. That sounds like you want to put it on paper. I, I have no problems with that. I just don't think. I just at five hundred dollars. Then you're like, what are you looking at? Five hundred dollars in CPUs these days. You're going up against Threadripper practically. You know, that's a tough fight. Mm, you're going up against that uh, eight core Threadripper part. <laughs> what's I haven't even looked at Skylake X prices lately, but are they what's an eight core go for? I haven't looked at those in a long time. Five ish? I forget. I know everybody's kinda like, yeah. But uh, I it's I don't know. I, I think they're gonna start compete on price. I if you ask I hope me. They I'm do. making that up, I'm just guessing. <laughs> I hope they do, but they haven't so far. Yeah, they haven't so far, which would support you. But at some point I do think there are there are some things where they're giving you more threads before, right? Um, you're getting a, you're getting a what six core, non hyper threaded part for two something. You can never get that before. Mm. Thank you, AMD. And you're getting hyper threading at at the low end where you never got that before. So there's a lot of things. I think they 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 recognize the reality is they have to fight a core war, so they have to. Right, mm -hmm. but they haven't changed their position on price. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Because they've been able to at least say that hey, we've got better IPC performance. But so it's, they can justify not having to lower their prices. It is it is just five percent at this point, though. It's not as big as it's it was last year. Five percent, and then it's they not, have their but clocks. They can though. still they can still market that. Yeah, they can still they, trot that out. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, we're gonna see in Q four who's right. <laughs> is everybody agreeing with me or them? Uh, nobody's agreeing with you, Gordon. No. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was completely transparent and also a little brutal. Uh, so we have uh, we have some quick questions. If uh, cool. if we want to hit them, we we got uh, a couple. We've, couple. Yeah, minutes. we've got a place to be in about eight minutes. Oh, yeah, so right. we can yep. answer some We're questions. Maybe a couple of them. All right, uh, real quick then. Uh, ah, ah, ah no. <laughs> <laughs> We're over. You just ended us. <laughs> He just Thanos us. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Spoiler. Hit the wrong. Hey. Hit the wrong. Uh, we got a couple people asking about the uh, the. What are you Jeez. I'm hit the wrong button. Oh, I'm so flustered. What button are you looking for? Wrong button. Oh, bad Adam. Uh, Adam, it's the other one to rotate the B wing. Ah, rotate the B wing. <laughs> Don't drop the bombs on your own people. Uh, no, there's a, a a lot of people asking about the uh, the memory lawsuit. Uh, something about uh, the memory oh, price yes. fixing investigation uh did you guys know anything there's a class action claim being brought against the big memory suppliers claiming that, that they've colluded to inflate ram prices uh i believe it's by the same company that won the last one you know a decade or whatever ago uh and we'll have to see what happens in court but it's here yeah <laughs> I was surprised. Wasn't Rambus part of the the sewers this time? I think, or I forget, or were they I, all part of the people being sued? So, I'm horrible at pulling legal information out of my butt on a you know <laughs> just a random question. That's the kind of stuff I never just want to like start guessing names at. <laughs> yeah, you would think though if they you know they'd be a little smarter about you know keep you know maintaining prices. It's like gas stations. There's no collusion, but the one up the street is always one cent less or the same price. <laughs> but it's easy for them to look down the street and say, hey, it's that much. Okay, lower it a penny today. <laughs> uh, I mean they who knows, but they have been found guilty of it before. So we'll have to see. Uh Clay has a follow up question on that. Uh if if they do lose the suit, does that mean the prices will come down? Uh, did last time, right? Uh, and I, I think there's probably market forces at work more than anything, but it is a chance in long term it could could come down. Um, but I think you just have fewer people making memory DRAM for PCs. So it's not just PCs either. It's smartphones, smartphones need it. Everything needs it these tablets. days. Right. So it's it's just tougher. You know, I really need to force them to make uh, memory for PCs. I don't. I don't. I don't know. We'll see though. 
Uh, real quick one from uh, Dragon Kurt on Twitch. What headset do you use, Brad? This is the Razer Kraken V2. My oh. wife got it for me for Christmas a couple years ago. Nice. Uh, also on Twitch, uh, Torn94 asks, uh, uh, do you think AMD, AMD will make the Epic version core count into Threadripper refresh, like a 32, 64 gig version? I, I think never say never, although I, I do think we are at the practical limit of, of what consumers need with applications. Um, <clears throat> maybe, but it I, I don't think it really gets them that much more at this point. If they can improve the clocks on, on Threadripper, and, I mean, it's probably doing really well on based just on pricing against Skylake X, so. Uh, if it did increase, I would be surprised if it increased all the way to 32. I would, if it did increase, I'd expect like a mid-step, like the 24 or whatever. Yep. Yeah, and they've never actually told me that the second dummy dies on there in the socket are, are, are connected electrically. But there is a refresh chipset, so maybe this new X399 Plus supports uh, all four dies, so it's possible. Uh, two more real quick. Thank you for everyone uh, calling in but or uh, chatting in, but we have to go soon. Uh, Derek Morrison is saying uh, 2800X when the Z490 board comes out. 10-core chip? Possibly. Very possibly. Who knows? Gordon's the one who thinks it's happening. Um, what? Right? It wasn't, no, no, I said no. Time, I said no. No on the 2800X? No. Oh, no. I think 2800X is just going to be higher clock. I don't think it'll increase Yeah, I don't think count. it'll increase core count, but I do think it's possible we'll see it when the uh, new chipsets come out. Yeah, yeah it's possible. Say one surprise. And there will be the best of the best, the ones that will, I mean, clearly the 2700X... Still, you know, didn't have the overclocking headroom of 6700K. Duh, it's got eight cores, but, which is what some fans would say. Uh, the the 2800X, the cream of the crop, may get higher in the in the 4 gigahertz range. That's what my guess would be. All right, uh, and last one uh, is from somebody who redacted it, but I saw it before you took it away, what? Canon Wright, on YouTube. Uh, and this is a, a one-word answer from all you guys. Is PC gaming dead? <laughs> Holy smokes! Did they? Did he just? That's a two-word answer. Did, yeah, that's that was, that was a two-word. Lamau. Yeah. That's a word, right? Yeah. L M A O. Yeah. Lamau. Is that a word? It is now. It's an acronym. Close well, I just said Lamau. I didn't say L M A O. I said Lamau. So I yeah. That's just like what? I was like, what? Did you like? Yeah, that's my word. What? What? Huh? <laughs> no, I, I like. Did you just like huh? the Doc Brown just get you back here in the DeLorean because this this ain't this ain't 2005. I mean, like it's pretty clear PC gaming is is the place to be for gaming today. So I don't. Elena will tell you that too. Elena will say that. Gordon. We don't got time for this debate. Well, wait, she has to use the controller <laughs> to type that out, though. Uh, Brad uses the controller, too. I do. And so does Adam. You're yeah. surrounded. And Gordon. PC gaming is well alive. Console gaming is dead because all consoles are PCs. They so, are. Yeah, they just don't done. work with mouse and keyboard. Yeah, I we won. Did. We did it. I mean, we did it. We won done. the war. That's the hard thing. Done. I think, though, yeah, we, wait, we're going to have the epic. Brad, did you know about this? I'm going to play Adam. Oh, God. We have, I'm to, play we have to go. He keeps talking about I'm going to play Willis, another person here at the company. I, we got Elena, too. We're going to have Jesus one Christ. keyboard mouse yep. Yep. versus, like, multiple uh -huh. people controller. Cool. Counter-Strike. Great show. I think I'm uh, like good, good show, guys. Uh, okay. Thank All you, right. everyone. We got to get out. In. We're gotta, we okay, got to go. go. <laughs> the hook is coming. Check back next week for your fix of PC Talk on the Full Nerd. For audio listeners, subscribe to us on iTunes and also leave a review. Every time you do, a B-Wing starts to rotate slowly. <laughs> also, you can listen to us on Google Play and Stitcher. Send questions and comments to the full nerd at PCWorld.com. Thanks for coming. I'm Gordon Bong with Brad Charkas. Adios. Elena Yee. Rotisserie chicken. <laughs> and Adam Patrick Murchie. Murray. Murchie? Murchie. Murchie. I'm doing that because you messed everybody's name up in the chat. <laughs> we'll take us out. Uh, let's see if I can hit the right button this time. Yep, that was right. Oh, finally. Woo!